Sergio Benavid is here, your local criminal lawyer, immigration and criminal law for California. Doing this video to talk about what happens after somebody enters a guilty plea or a no contest plea or after they're found guilty at trial. So what happens is first they're found guilty or they enter a guilty plea or no contest and then the court uh, postpones or continues the case into the future, whether it's 30 days or more for the sentencing. So between being found guilty and being sentenced, there's a time gap. What happens during that time gap? Well, I'm going to tell you. So what happens is the defendant, uh, whether he or she is in jail or out on bail, first they have to go meet with the probation officer. And the probation officer will write a report and submit it so the court can read it. The DA will have it and the, the, the defense attorney will have it as well. And the judge can look at it and it could persuade the judge to give either a lighter sentence or a heavier sentence. And what the probation officer does in these reports usually is they'll kind of do a summary of the person's life, where they grew up, what kind of life they had. They may do a summary in their report of that person's criminal history. Uh, they'll talk about the crime that the person was found guilty of. Um, what the maximum punishment is and what the agreed upon deal is for punishment. And then the probation officer will make a recommendation on what they think the punishment should be. Now, uh, they also interview the defendant and ask them their point of view, not of just the crime, but they also ask them a lot about their lives. Um, they ask about drug use and they ask about um, alcohol use. And so uh, I often tell clients to be very careful what you tell your probation officer because that person's not your friend. They're not there having a chat for fun. They're there to write a report uh, and to make a recommendation on what should be included in your terms of either prison or jail or probation. So uh, if a defendant tells the probation officer, oh yeah, I love smoking weed, you know, really relaxes me, it takes the edge off, great then uh, the judge will sentence you to drug treatment. The judge will order piss testing. Um, you've just locked yourself into a box of annoying and harassing drug testing because you talked about your marijuana use. Uh, a lot of judges, in my experience, they don't care that it's now legal. They don't care that it's um, you know, been decriminalized uh, because they're fossils and they still live in the past. And so they'll still treat it like something bad and needs to be treated and needs to be fought. So don't admit marijuana use is what I tell people. I don't care if it's true or not. Don't talk about it. Same thing with alcohol. Uh, if you tell them a story that, you know, you drink all the time and it gets out of control and you've got alcohol at your office, you have it in your purse, you have it at home, you have little stashes around the house. These might be signs of somebody who's an alcoholic and then you're giving probation and maybe the judge a reason to include uh, alcohol treatment, an inpatient program, maybe uh, aggressive Alcoholics Anonymous meetings while you're on probation. So the things you say have consequences and can hurt you. Uh, so I warn people about that. What you say uh, with a probation officer will be reflected in the report and it could affect what you're sentenced to. Um, another thing I, it's bare, uh, is worth mentioning is that uh, a lot of times uh, the judge and the DA are looking for what's called remorse. Uh, if the person is sorry for what they did and apologizes for that and realizes that they harmed someone or they uh, did something that was harmful to, to the community or society, then sometimes that can also work in your favor and lead to um, leniency, so a lighter sentence. But, you know, that's not a cookie cutter rule because um, it doesn't matter how sorry you are. If you molested and raped your five year old daughter for five years, no one's going to care that you're sorry. They're going to come at you really hard. So it depends on the circumstances and it depends what you're saying you're sorry about and why you're saying sorry. I would really discuss this with uh, your defense attorney before uh, expressing any remorse or admitting guilt uh, to a probation officer for that report. But uh, when, it come, when you come back to court now for the sentencing, um, there might have been an indicated sentence, which is a promise the judge made of what the sentence should be. Or there might be a plea bargain that you made with the district attorney. If you plead to this, you're going to get this type of punishment. And generally speaking, that's what the defendant's going to get, no matter what the probation report says. But 
the judges have the power to uh, be persuaded at sentencing if the victim shows up or the victim's family or other witnesses start crying and talking about how harmed they were by the defendant's actions. Well, the judge could be swayed and say, you know what? I know that you signed a deal and you were promised only eight months of jail, but I'm going to do this to your deal. And if they do that, and the judge has the right to do that, to rip up a deal, then they could just reset the case and make the defendant go to trial because they didn't like the bargain and they think that the defendant has to spend more time in jail or be punished harsher. That can happen. It doesn't always happen, but the judge has the power to do that. And that just means that you're going to have to go back to court and fight the case. And the deal blew up. Uh, I believe that was in the news fairly recently when the... um, son of the president, I think it was Bo Biden or Hunter Biden, I forget which, made a plea bargain and the judge blew up the deal because they thought it was too lenient. And that was all over the news. But that's what that was about. So at sentencing, the judge will give the sentence. Uh, They will discuss what's in the police uh, probation report. They will let victims give statements and witnesses give statements. The defendant can give a statement. So anything can happen to change the judge's mind as to what the punishment should be. But generally speaking, most of the times, the judge is just going to go along with whatever the deal was that encouraged the person to uh, plead guilty. Different story if you're found guilty at trial. But that's sentencing.